So we found all of our resistor voltages and on the outside. We know all of our, our currents, our final currents. We know all of our final voltages. Um, the last thing that we have to find for this circuit um, is the voltage that that capacitor uh, is charged with. And so we assumed early, early on in the beginning of the circuit that the capacitor would have a full charge because there really wasn't any other information given as far as time or how, you know, charge rate or any of that. Um, we don't even have the value of the capacitor. But we know um, that with or without the capacitor, if we were to measure, um, if we put, put our voltmeter right here and then measured from here to here, um, we should see a number. So we should be able to me take that measurement. So we need to be able to predict what that will be. Okay, so another, it's a, it's a simple matter. So basically we have a couple of loops here. Um, I could do this little loop here and this loop here, um, which both are, are adjacent, or adjacent to and include that capacitor. Um, so I'm just gonna go in there and do a couple more loop equations and solve for that unknown AB voltage, okay? So when I do this, I will go in here and I'll say, um, let's just say that our meter is sitting here and I'm measuring it just the way that it says in double subscript notation. So I'm measuring it with my, my red lead on A, right, and my black lead on B. So VAB is the term uh, that I will use and that just indicates red lead on A and black lead on B, so reference on B. All right, so what will that voltmeter show? Will it show a positive number or a negative number? And what will that value be? Well, let's find out right now. All right, so uh, as always, I'm gonna start here, zero equals, and I'm gonna go up towards that uh, V1, so minus 20 volts, it's a known voltage, um, plus, now I have, I have numbers, but just for the sake of, uh, of uh, ease of writing and mathematics, I'm just gonna write my variables, variables, so plus VR1, and then plus, I'm hitting the plus side of my meter, so plus VAB, and I'm through that capacitor, or that through that AB area, and I'm coming around, I'm hitting uh, R6, the plus side, so plus, VR6, all right? Well, now now we do have um, some numbers, but let's solve for VAB. So VAB equals, now I'm doing some algebra here, and, and uh, so VAB is positive, so I need to move all these other terms to the other side. So plus 20 volts minus VR1 minus VR6. All right, so VAB equals 20 volts minus VR1, which is two, whoops, let's write the minus in there, minus 2.636 volts minus VR6, which is 17.98 volts. All right, so VAB must equal, let's get the calculator out. Sorry, I can't show it. Uh, so 20 volts minus 2.636 minus 17.98 is, I'm getting only a value of minus, let's write this more clearly, minus 601. 616 millivolts is all, which is not very much. All right. Okay, so let's verify that, that we get the same answer. So I, I did one loop and I've also got this, uh, the loop that has R2, R5, the diode, um, and also includes that capacitor, that VAB. So let's start here on this B junction, and I'm gonna go upwards. And so zero equals 
So first thing I see the minus, the, the black or the negative lead of my meter, so minus VAB is where I'm measuring, plus VR2, minus, now we're coming around, plus VR2, minus that diode, that minus, that known minus nine volts. Okay, and then I'm back to R5 plus VR5. All right, okay, so now I'm just, I'm solving for VAB, so that's just a simple matter. Let's just move that one over. So VAB positive equals VR2 plus VR5 minus nine volts. So let's see what we get. VAB equals VR2, which is 3.116 volts, plus VR5, which is 5.273 volts, minus nine volts. Okay, here we go. So drum roll. Okay, so 3.116 volts, my, or plus now, plus 5.273 volts, minus nine volts. And this time I'm getting negative 611 millivolts, which is so close. And I just punched in those numbers, so I'm not using my saved numbers. So a little bit of rounding error is expected, but I'm only getting like five millivolts of difference. Although this is kind of a small number, it's still, uh, I mean, this is pretty good. Okay, so VAB, right, is minus 611 millivolts. The current between A and B, well, IAB, that's just zero amped because that capacitor is assumed to be a full charge, which is basically like an open. So that the A B resistance would be like you know, it would be like an infinite or an open between there. You could pull that capacitor out, and it wouldn't really make any difference. There's no current flow there. Um, v C D, which is right here, that is minus nine volts. Okay, so. Basically, if I put my voltmeter, red lead on C, black lead on D, I will see minus nine volts. That, that diode had just enough um, voltage available to it to reverse bias uh, that zener and cause avalanche, and basically it would, it would start flowing current and, allow, and just hold that nine volts. All right, and so the current, the current, so, Let's see, VCD is minus nine volts. Well, ICD, ICD is gonna be uh, this value here. Um, but if I put my red lead on C and my black lead on the anode, right? So I opened up this path here between C and D1. I open that up and put my red lead on C and my black lead on the anode of that diode, well, c current will be flowing from the more negative side towards the positive side, while my, my red lead would be on the C on the more negative side, so that current would be indicated as a minus, minus 2.956 milliamps on my meter. Okay, so, Final answers for this circuit. I know my A, B voltage to be minus 611 millivolts. My current is zero because it's a capacitor and that thing is gonna be fully charged and therefore no current should flow. Um, my VCD voltage is, is minus nine volts because that diode had enough to cause Zener action to happen, um, or, or, or at least the, the it's operating in the knee region and it is flowing current, holding onto that nine volts. I've got my ICD voltage or current, which would show on my meter uh, measured in that way as a minus 2.956 milliamps. 
So I have solved this thing. And for those of you that stuck around until the end, uh, bravo to you. Um, if you enjoyed this circuit or if you hated this circuit, um, I guess let's, uh, let's talk about it. If you can solve this circuit with, you know, there's probably different, I mean, you could Thevenize this circuit, you could fully Thevenize it, you could Nortonize it, you could throw some other uh, theorems at it. Um, th there's multiple ways to do this. Th the key is if you can um, solve this circuit, if you can pull those tricks out or those tools out when you need them and you can get through all these steps and layers and keep track of your numbers and do it well, um, you should feel pretty good because, uh, you know, if you can solve this circuit, you could basically solve, you know, any other circuit uh, in regards to DC electronics, um, provided you know about the components you're dealing with and you have some theorems or some tricks, some Kirchhoff uh, that you can use uh, to solve this complex circuit. So I hope that this, that you found this uh, information valuable and you know, good luck and happy, uh, happy troubleshooting. Take care for now.